Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to relate the phase difference to the electric field of each of the, of the individual waves traveling from the double slit to the point where they meet where there's going to be interference between the two waves either constructive or destructive interference based upon their phase difference. On the last video we all also saw that the phase difference can be defined as the path length difference divided by the wavelength times 2 pi and if we then want to write in terms of phi divided by 2 and replace the path length difference by d sine theta, which is how we geometrically calculate the path length difference on a double slit interference pattern, we can write that phi over 2 is equal to d sine theta divided by 2 lambda divided times 2 pi. Of course, lambda is the wavelength of the light, d is the distance between the two slits, and theta is the angle from the two slits to a point on the screen where we want to know what eventually, what the intensity is at the location based upon the phase difference. So we also know that the intensity can be found by saying this is equal to one half epsilon sub naught times the speed of light times E max squared, that would be the electric field intense or the electric field oscillation maximum of the light coming through the slits times the cosine of phi divided by two quantity squared. Now one more thing that I'm missing there is also of course four times that, let me make this a little bit bigger. There it's four times E max, because that's how we find when the phase difference is equal to zero, the cosine of zero is one, then we find out that the intensity is four times the intensity of an individual wave. So now what we're going to do is we're going to replace the cos the phi over two by what is equal to in terms of theta. So what we can say is that I is therefore equal to one half times epsilon sub naught C times four E max squared times the cosine squared of, and now we're going to plug in there, this whole thing right there, which is d sine theta divided by two times the wavelength times two pi. Now this quantity right here would simply be a fraction of the wavelength. Remember, d sine theta is the extra distance traveled by the second wave compared to the first wave, and that two lambda is, of course, lambda is the wavelength, so this would be a fraction of two lambda multiplied times two pi. That ends up being half the phase difference. That's why the one over two is in there. So what we're going to do now is realize that here, this can be written a little bit. This can be written as I is equal to four times one half epsilon sub naught C times E max quantity squared times the cosine squared of this whole thing, which is d sine theta divided by two lambda times two pi. And finally, we should realize that this here, one half epsilon sub naught c e max squared, that's actually the intensity of either one of these two light waves coming through the slits. And so we can say that is therefore the intensity of a single light wave or i sub naught. So this is i equals four times i sub naught times the cosine squared of d sine theta divided by two lambda times two pi. And that would be the equation that we had derived before. This is basically the intensity right here. It's four times the initial intensity times the cosine squared of phi divided by two, but phi divided by two can be expressed in terms of theta, the angle that the two rays make relative to the horizontal from the double slit to a point on the screen. So let's go ahead and box that in. That's an important equation. And now to get kind of a feel for that, let's plug in some numbers to get kind of a feel for what that may be. Let's say that we have a double slit and the double slit has a distance of, let's say, a half a millimeter. So let's say that D is equal to 0 0.5 millimeters. Let's say that lambda, the wavelength is 600 nanometers, which is typical wavelength for visible light. And let's say that we have, we want to consider a point over here where the angle theta is equal to, let's say, 0 0.1 degrees. All right, so what would that look like numerically? What would this portion look like, which is essentially an angle in terms of radians, or we can also express it in terms of degrees, for example. If it makes it easier, we can say that this is equal to 4 times I sub naught times the cosine squared of d sine theta divided by 2 lambda times 360 degrees. So now if we do it like this, it will be in terms of degrees, it might be easier to understand. 
All right, so let's find out what this quantity is equal to. What is this equal to question mark if we use these particular values just to get a feel for it? All right, so the quantity d sine theta, let me write it again, d sine theta divided by 2 times the wavelength times 360 degrees is equal to, if we plug the values in, for d we had 5 tenths of a millimeter, so that's 0 0.0005 meters. The sine of 1 degree, because that, no, 0.1 degree, so times the sine of 0 0.1 degrees, divided by 2 times the wavelength, which is 600 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, that's nanometers, and we multiply the whole thing times 360 degrees. So basically, we're looking for a fraction of 360 degrees. All right, let's see here. So at 0 0.0005 times 0 0.1 takes the sine of that, divided by 2 and divided by 600 e to the 9 minus equals, and we have 0 0.727. So this would be 0 0.727 times 360 degrees. And if we multiply that times 360, we get 261.8 degrees. And that would be the phase angle divided by 2. So remember that this whole quantity inside the brackets here represents the phase angle divided by 2. So in this case, the phase angle divided by 2 is 261.8 degrees, which means, so this is equal to phase angle divided by 2, which means, therefore, the phase angle would be twice that number, times 2 equals, and that would be 523.6 degrees, that would be the phase angle, and if we subtract 360 degrees from that, so then also the phase angle would be equal to that minus 360 degrees, because that's a whole number, that's a whole phase that we can subtract from that. That would be 163.6 degrees, and that would be the phase difference between the two waves when they arrive at the screen. So in the situation where the slit distance is a half a millimeter, the wavelength is 600 nanometers, the angle that it makes with the horizontal is 0.1 degrees, we can from that calculate what phi divided by 2 is and ultimately what phi is equal to in terms of a phase difference between 0 and 360 degrees. So in this case it would be a phase difference of 163.6 degrees and the result would be that's close to 180. That means there's mostly destructive interference and you wouldn't see much light at that particular location. So based upon what I've seen here that means that if we have a central maximum here then there must have been another maximum here, and then this would be close to a minimum when we get to this location right there. That's probably what this scenario looks like. Because we've already gone past the whole wavelength, so from max to zero, back to a full wavelength, that's 360 degrees, and then add another 163.6 degrees, so we're almost back to a minimum at that point. And so that gives you a feel that if you know the angle, the slit distance, the wavelength, you should be able to calculate the phase difference. From the phase difference, you should be able to calculate what the intensity will be at that particular location. Now that we've I've got all this under control, I think we're now ready to go ahead and do some real examples and apply all this information that we've just learned how to use. So let's go try some examples and see how to actually calculate density, wave difference, phase difference, and things like that. Okay, let's go for it.